everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Heartland Franchise Guide, your insider's guide to all things franchising in the local area. I'm Blake Martin, local small business franchise owner and your Heartland Franchise Guide. This is the place for advocacy, resources, and education on all things franchising in the local area, and a great place for entrepreneurs to just stop by when they want to learn more about the franchising industry. Now, I mentioned several times in that intro, every time you hear me, local, 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 local. Well, I'll tell you what, we're not afraid to go halfway around the planet to find content that will be relevant to our local audience. And today, I'm happy to introduce somebody who is an international master franchisee for Australia, and his name is Daryl Solly. Daryl, thank you so much for being our guest today. Well, it's nice to be here, Blake. You're in Brisbane, Australia. Tell us exactly yeah. where that is. Well, Brisbane is about uh, 13 and a half hours from Los Angeles. Flying, oh, having it? just done that, I can verify that that's pretty much what it is. <laughs> uh, it's on the East Coast, about halfway up, if you look at a uh, map of Australia. It's, a, it's, the warmer, it's in the warmer part. Well, then you, you picked a nice climate. Yes, we have a very good climate, and uh, yeah, we have very, very warm winters, and uh, but extremely hot summers. So, and they're opposite uh, of ours, right? Hmm. And they're opposite. You're yeah, your they summer. are. They're opposite to yours, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So we're Can't... sitting in 36 degree heat in Christmas time, and you're sitting in freezing cold temperatures, sort of, mm-hmm. um, you know, with snow falling outside. And that's 36 centigrade, so that means warm. <laughs> that's extremely hot. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Daryl, I appreciate you joining us. Before I go too far in and confuse people with jargon, anybody that's not familiar with this, let me explain contextually. I introduced Daryl as an international master franchisee for Right at Home, by the way. And Right at Home, of course, was founded here in Omaha, Nebraska, and to this day is headquartered in Omaha, Nebraska. A small set of franchise organizations, as they grow, make a decision to expand internationally into other countries including right at home that started in the U.S. and decided to expand out into other countries like Australia. Many choose this route, this infrastructure, for building out their franchise systems internationally, and they designate an entity or a group that becomes the master franchisee in charge of replicating what happened in the original country, in this case with right at home in the United States, they license the rights and put Daryl in charge as the managing partner of the franchise of the master franchise in Australia of expanding the franchise system throughout Australia. So really easy lift, right, Daryl? I mean, it was kind of simple. You snapped your fingers and just sort of expanded the thing. Oh, yeah, Australia. yeah. It was a piece of cake, right. you know, really. There was no problem at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what all the fuss was about. we'll we'll get into that in a minute (laughs) that might require a couple more episodes but we'll get there and so of course the responsibility you have is you are a franchisor you're the master franchisee that picked up some of the the know-how and intellectual property of of right at home the home care franchise but then you had to make it your own and i want to talk to you a little bit about what that experience was like because we know that our listeners are interested in knowing, well, what are the expansion opportunities in the franchising industry? And maybe some of them one day will be encountered with, what if I became an international franchisee or international master franchisee for a brand that started in another country? There's lots of examples here in the U.S. already, and they're looking for somebody to bring or expand their brand in the U.S. So I believe that your experience that you've had through nearly the last decade should be very instructive to those folks. Well... You know, it's certainly possible to do. Uh, you know, you've got to have your wits about you a bit. But, yeah, absolutely, it can be done. Well, I'm, I'm jumping right in. I'm going to start with the tough question, okay? What in the world is Vegemite? <laughs> well, it's a difficult answer. But it is effectively a plant-based malt. Uh, you know, there are different, other different brands around the world that do similar things, Bovril and Marmite, etc. I think you may be familiar with those brands, but that's what it is. And you really, Australians put it on toast, mostly in the morning. Personally, I find it pretty tough to eat. Yeah. Yeah. But, but <laughs> you know, it is, it, but it is sold in huge quantities. Sort of. <laughs> Very popular in Australia. I know from Very popular. 
<laughs> and, and a relevant way to thank you for joining us at this early hour because, of course, for you, it's very early in the morning being 15 hours different from That's central right. and time. The day. The 15 yeah. hours in the day. So it's actually, we're actually here yeah, Friday. You're talking to me Thursday, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a serious question. What is it that motivated you and really you and your wife are the managing partners, right? You and your yeah. co-owner, Mom Karen. Karen yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, so, who yeah. have run the day-to-day. What motivated you to become international master franchisees? Um, well, it sort of uh, was a sequence of events, as these things inevitably are. Uh, but what happened was uh, we were, I had done a bunch of research on the home care industry here in Australia. Uh, and I'd done a, I was a management consultant at the time, and I'd done some work for one of the large not-for-profits mm-hmm. here in Australia that was in the home care industry. In Australia, the home care industry has always been dominated by not-for-profits. Uh, so, um, you know, for a private pay home care company to start up was going to be interesting. So we did a bunch of research on that to understand uh, what the market looked like and what the impediments were. Uh, and then we decided, well, we figured, well, maybe we'll start one from scratch ourselves, you know, just kind of figure it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it became pretty apparent early on that that was going to make, that was going to take a, lo- a long time to do. Um, so we, uh, I started looking uh, around the world to see who else was out there, uh, not really knowing what I would find. And um, I sent out a few emails to various brands in the US asking them whether they uh, were interested in operating in Australia. And uh, Right at Home came back pretty much straight away, uh, your office, uh, and they said, hey, you know, um, you know, sort of we're interested in talking to you kind of thing. So that began a conversation which ran for about six months or so. Uh, and, you know, through that period, we got to know each other pretty well. And I think that's one of the key starting points is that you have to be able to get on uh, at a personal level with the with your partners, if you're going to choose partners in a, in an overseas country, so you've got to really make sure that you have the same set of values and that you can communicate easily with each other and you can be pretty frank and honest with each other. So it takes a while for that trust to build up. So you can't just leap into it. You know, you have to really spend time. Um, and we did a bunch of calls uh, and um, uh, and skyping, which was uh, you know much you know just shows you how how long ago that was. We were <laughs> skyping, right? <laughs> Nine years can seem like a long time when you're talking about that yeah, technology. Yeah. So <laughs> a lot of stuff has happened in the interim. But, um, yeah, and then through that process, we, um, you know, we, we got to the point with Right at Home where we felt that they would be really, um, well, at that point, potentially very good partners. And we made arrangements, my wife, Karen, and I, to travel to the U.S., to Omaha, Nebraska, to meet with the uh, management team at uh, Right at Home. And, uh, you know, I have to say that was a very, uh, ex- that was a truly excellent experience. Um, and we, you know, it sort of verified a lot of the thinking we had. And uh, they put us through our paces, though. Of course, I remember uh, the day before um, somebody from Right at Home saying, hey, um, we're looking forward to your presentations. I said, what are you talking about, my presentation, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the meeting? I said, no, 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 you know, you've got to do your presentation. So, well. How long is it? Because I had done a business plan and already submitted that to Right at Home, which is quite a copious, uh, very um, sort of substantial document, which had a lot of, you know, basically all the research in it and how it all worked. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they said, oh, you've got to have this presentation. I said, well, what, what are you talking about? How long does the presentation have to run for? So they said, oh, about an hour. Now, in fact, no, it was, I think they said two hours. I said, well, you've got to be kidding me. Do you know how many slides you've got to produce for a two-hour presentation? <laughs> And uh, we had traveled um, from Australia, so we were in Los Angeles at the time because we decided to take a day in Los Angeles before flying to Omaha. But anyway, uh, so I spent the next day, instead of sightseeing in Los Angeles, study, uh, writing a, uh, a, a presentation for Right at Home. My goodness. Uh, and uh, so that was, uh, we had a bit of a laugh about that when I, when I arrived in Omaha. And, uh, but it was really good. So that was the starting point for the relationship. And then we... Um, we eventually, I mean, uh, subsequent to that visit, we negotiated the franchise agreement, mm-hmm. and uh, which, take, which took quite a while because there's quite a lot of complexity between Australia and the US, uh, where the rules are different and jurisdiction for the franchise agreements, one of the points that comes up. And in other words, if there's a dispute, where do you handle that? And how does that get handled? That sort of thing. Not easy across countries to do that well. Right. Um, 
and uh, and then yeah, and then we visited. We were in, you know once we'd signed the agreement, we were invited to back to the US to do our training, and uh, we went back to Omaha the following February, I think it was. Uh, when we um, did our training and uh, and, and uh, kind of got the uh, the U.S. sort of perspective on how to run a home care company, and to a very large degree, the general principles of how to run a home care company very well are still present. Yeah, uh, that that never changes. It's really the minuta, the details of how you do it, uh, and the operating in a um, in a complex regulatory environment like we do. Uh, there's a bunch of extra work that has to be done to be able to uh, run the business successfully. And how did you, so you, you had a pilot location, right? To, to be yeah. able to vet out and, and yeah. prove out, uh, to, to, to create a proof of concept in exactly. local Exactly. And markets. a lot of, a lot of franchise, I think a lot of international franchises make the mistake of, uh, arriving in a country, choosing a person like me and saying, Hey, you know, why don't you go out and sell some franchises for us kind of thing, you know, <laughs> where the where the master franchise never actually ever runs the actual business, which I think is a pretty uh, big mistake personally. But right at home, we're very determined that we were going to run a home care company first and then run a franchise business second. Gotcha. So we started off with a home care company, which we ran for the best part of three, nearly four years. Uh, before that office got to the point where, you know, and, and the business started to grow where we could actually sell that pilot office and then move into franchising. So we knew everything there was to know about home care prior to the franchising beginning, before the franchise process began. So we did two years um, uh, running the home care company. Uh, and then uh, we did a, a another training course in the U.S. on how to franchise or how they wanted us to franchise or how they suggested we, we would franchise. And that was another quite lengthy training course that we did in Omaha. Uh, and then we came back and then through a process of, uh, you know, through a, a process of development, which took quite a while. And then we started franchising. So we from the from the time we started the company to the time that we started franchising was probably the best part of four years. Oh, sorry, probably three years before mm -hmm. we started franchising here in Australia. And you've been at it for a good eight or nine years, right? Since opening Yeah, so we've up. been going eight years. So we've been franchising for six of those eight years. Got it. Uh, well, sort of, you probably have to say five of those years because really the first year was, uh, you know, it, it was all development related. Um, yeah. And preparing documents and operating manuals and, uh, you know, all this, the processes that you need to have in place to franchise. Uh, there was a lot of there, there was a lot of work needed to be done to to, to get to that point. And Daryl, is it working? Are you are you seeing expansion occurring and success for? Yeah, for yeah. So look, it's, um, it, 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 uh, we've got forty offices here in Australia now. Um, oh wow! Congratulations. They, yeah. So it's look obviously in our in a, you know in the US it's a much much bigger market. Uh, to give you an idea, I guess we. If we were sold out in Australia, we would have 95 offices. Um, if the U.S. were to sell out, they might have 700 offices. So right. the scale is different. Um, you know, we only have 25 million people living here. Um, in roughly the exact same geographical footprint, right? Yeah, exactly. The Australia is exactly the same size, pretty much east to west, as the continental United States. So Just take you know, out Alaska. Got, yeah, yeah, that's right. So we've got 25 million spread over a very wide area. although. Um, inevitably, they, uh, you know, the concentration of population is in the major cities like Sydney and Melbourne and Brisbane and Perth. Um, but we, but you do have a very decentralized um, population as well. Got it. And on on that topic, when you talk about you know a, a difference between the U.S. and Australia with the population density, I imagine there are other lessons you learned with the pilot office, and even as you're expanding mm. into new markets. There, there were obviously adjustments that had to be made. Same industry, but just can you talk a little bit about some of the adjustments that you weren't expecting that came about through the piloting and through your early growth? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, we we started off in a market where it was dominated by not for profits, and the government regulatory environment was very much in favor of the uh, the not for profit community. So, you know, for a private pay company or a company that is actually out there trying to make a profit, of course, that was a bit of a foreign concept for most people that we were speaking to. Um, now, that probably wouldn't happen if somebody was 
internationally franchising a hamburger joint or a pizza parlor <laughs> or, a, you know, something like that. Obviously, in home care, um, both in the US and in Australia, is a highly regulated environment. So, you know, you have to be, uh, you know, you have to sort of embrace that whole regulatory obligation, which took quite a while to do. And so when we started off, we really could only deliver private pay services. We couldn't service government clients because we you know, we weren't accredited. So there was a whole process around that took probably another 18 months before we got accredited. Um, and of course, that was difficult because they were struggling to understand why uh, a private pay company or a, you know, or a commercial company would want to do it sort of thing. You know, it was actually that was a foreign thing for the government, uh, you know, to, to deal with when we came along. Uh, so, yeah, so it was, uh, you know, it took, just, everything just took a long time to do, basically. It was, uh, it, you know, we, while we were running the home care company, th that was still going on behind the scenes, but there was a lot of preparation that was needed. We had to rewrite all the policies and procedures, um, of which there's a huge uh, number. We had to write all the operating manuals from scratch. Um, yeah, it, it took a long time to get going. Yeah, th things that uh, your franchisees will never have to do, right? No, that's right. It's so not on that owners, scale. And, yeah, our owners can come into our business. Uh, you know, they can uh, do their training, uh, rent a premises, you know, hang their, hang their sign outside, and they can be in business within a couple of weeks, really, from the time they've completed their training, I mean. Um, takes uh, In our world, it takes owners about six months to get through the recruitment process for most people. It takes a long time to sink in, and also because in in in, in Australia it's still very an, very much an immature market mm -hmm. compared with the U.S. So, you know, we only have ten. I think there's probably only ten uh, franchising brands operating in Australia in the home care space. Um, I mean, most of those are also startups in themselves, um, but the, the, there's probably three major players in Australia. One of which is us. Uh, and the rest are all sort of startups really trying to do or trying to mimic the same thing as inevitably happens. Um, but the, um, yeah, so the, the whole uh, process around trying to get going was like we're walking in treacle, you know, like you, you kind of one step slowly and pick up your other step and move forward at a, at a, at a snail's pace to get it going, you know, right. it, was quite a, it was quite difficult in many ways. So the question you knew I was going to ask, knowing what you know now, what would you do differently? Um, strangely enough, I don't think we could have done things much differently to what we did because we were in a constraint to, in, in, uh, under certain constraints, regulatory constraints. Mm -hmm. um, we were bringing a new brand to the Australia, which of course was completely unknown. And, and that's always very uh, cathartic because you'll go and visit somebody and say, I'm from right at home. And say, who? And you'll say, no, I'm from right at home on it. I'd like to talk to you about our services sort of thing. And they'd look at you strangely and say, well, you know, who the hell is right at home? You know? <laughs> what, what are you doing? <laughs> are you, you know, so it was, uh, it took a long time to break the ice, I have to say. Well, I appreciate you now, you know, Now we pretty much, you know, right across the whole country, we've got offices. We, um, you know, now we have, um, you know, we have a very substantial marketing spend through our marketing fund. Um, we are, uh, you know, we're very much up in the face of the market now. Yeah. Um, and uh, which is really great. And uh, it's really benefiting our owners who are all growing really well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you were truly a groundbreaker in the marketplace, clearly. Yeah. So in other words, I probably didn't answer your question very well. But all I'm saying is, I suppose we trusted uh, the brand and we trusted our partners in the U.S. Uh, they trusted us. Um, we, we sort of had a bit of navel gazing, you know, as you do when you're thinking, oh my God, what have I done? You know, is this really going to work? But, um, you know, uh, right at home in Omaha, were very supportive all the way through. They visited us in, in Australia a couple of times, in fact, many times. Um, and they gave a lot of guidance because look, let's face it, when you're franchising, it doesn't really matter. The principles of it are the same in any country, really. Um, you know, you have to have a system that works. You have to have a system that's profitable. Um, you have to have a robust brand, something that you can really get behind. You have to have a strong set of values. All of those things were very easy because we shared those with um, our partners in the U.S. Got it. You started to segue into my last question. I know we're going to have to wrap up here, but um, you started answering this a little bit. 
What would your you you have a very unique viewpoint being the international master franchisee and seeing everything from pilot to startup to growing the franchise mm. system and now having a stabilized franchise system in uh, in what is becoming a maturing market. But yeah, if someone were to approach were to approach you and and ask advice for expanding their franchise into an international franchise. What mm-hmm. advice could you share with them? If there are one or two things that you'd really okay. emphasize. Okay. Well, that's, I think that's the, the $64,000 question really. Yeah. But ultimately um, it's very important for the home franchise, let's call it, uh, whether it's a US based office or a US based franchise brand or wherever, you have to really get to understand what goes on in the country you're targeting. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to do a bunch of work, uh, understanding how that market works, the regulatory environment. Mar- environment in Australia, we have an extremely regulated labour market. Um, so the whole way you manage workers uh, is highly regulated. So that you really need to understand uh, that the market really very well before you go out looking for a master franchise. Um, because if you don't do that, you know you're really putting your master franchise, your new master franchise, at risk because you don't really understand what they're going going through. And you don't understand um, the, the processes that they have to face um, properly. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. you end up with a bunch of um, uh, miscommunication and, and lack of understanding between the two parties. Um, and, and, and expectations can be uh, high and uh, be disappointed. You know, you can be disappointed if, you, if that work isn't done. So the number one thing is understand, understand the market you're going into, but understand it really well. The second thing is when you are recruiting master franchise owners, you have to make sure you share the same values, you know, and bearing in mind, people come from different countries. uh, There's going to be cultural differences as well. So you really have to understand that and you have to understand the, um, but, but really a strong set of values about how you do business, honesty, integrity, all of those things are very, very important because you really got to trust each other to do this. Yeah. Uh, and you have to trust each other implicitly. You know, you can have no doubts about what you're doing. You have to be completely comfortable with it. Um, and it takes a while for that to happen. Um, so you really gotta, you got to make sure that you have a very strong set of, of values that you share. Uh, and if you do that well, then, you know, you'll have a happy relationship. Um, that's not to say that relationships don't all have rocky patches. Of course, it, of course you do. Uh, you do definitely have that, but uh, you know, if you if you all if you all have a common goal and you're all working towards that common goal and you all understand what that goal looks like, then it's much easier to get over those moments where you may disagree on things. That's an outstanding point. There's lots of things that could go sideways when you're literally in a different country. So that, that, that's right. It, it's true. It can go horribly sideways. <laughs> having but, that um, bedrock of trust is huge. Yeah. Um, and, and I think, you know, the, in, in our industry in Australia, there's been uh, at least two U.S. brands that have come in uh, to do home care who failed because they chose the wrong master franchise owner in the first place. Uh, and that, cre- you know, and they just while well, they kicked off really well and they were going very well, but eventually the relationship broke down and, and it all ended up in tears. Um, so really, um, it, it all comes down to making sure that the people that you choose are committed to the common goal and that you buy into the mission that that company has set for itself internationally uh, and that you embrace the brand that you have chosen. Well, you just tied that one up with a nice, neat bow. So thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, it's, it's not complicated. It's not complicated. Conceptually, it's not complicated at all. Mm-hmm. Practically pretty damn complicated. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Daryl, I know you've got a busy day that you have to get to because we asked you to start really early in Brisbane, Australia, 15 hours away from our time zone. So I want to take a moment to thank you again for for sharing with our audience today and sharing your own experiences. And congratulations on all your success. Well, thank you. It's been a a great journey. I wouldn't want to change it. Uh, It's taken a few years of my life, no doubt. (laughs) But... uh, but I've enjoyed it and I get my kicks out of helping small business people be very successful. Uh, And I can, I can very comfortably say that that's what's happening here in Australia with right at home. Well, I appreciate that. And I appreciate you sharing with us so that you can help aspiring and existing entrepreneurs 
all around the world, including right here in our local area. Very good. Happy to do it. Thank you. With that, we're going to wrap up for today. Remember, you can always scan the QR code on your screen if you want some contact information. You want to know how to get a hold of somebody in international master franchising like Daryl. You can hit him on LinkedIn, LinkedIn, by the way. But if you got questions about that, scan that, and we'll get in touch with you when you reach out to us. I want to thank everybody for spending time with us today. Thank Daryl Solly one more time, International Master Franchisee with Right at Home in Brisbane, Australia. And I want to thank all of you for being with us on another episode of the Heartland Franchise Guy. Don't keep us a secret. Subscribe, follow, and share us on all the major platforms and on YouTube. When you see somebody that can benefit from this information, share it along with them. I want to thank you again for being with us on another episode of the Heartland Franchise Guy.